Welcome to Peace. We're glad that you're here worshiping with us today. I am going to invite you to stand if you are able to and join us as we sing our opening songs. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. Stand apart. 
congregation, you may be seated as I draw our attention onto the waters of the baptismal font, that the waters you see flowing here might be a reminder of your own baptismal day when the waters were poured over you and God revealed himself to you with a promise to love you and claim you as his own forever. That is the God we worship this morning. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Trusting in God's love for us, invite us now to open our hearts and confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Take a few moments for reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news, that in Christ Jesus your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, you are adopted into the household of Christ, and you are inheritors of eternal life. So live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. It's nice to start worship with such good news. And uh, with that, I extend again to you a, a special welcome and good morning. Good to have you here. We are in the season of Epiphany, a season when we, uh, we read stories about Jesus' life that, that, that reveal something about him. And today is uh, revealing uh, uh, things about him around the word fear. Uh, don't know so much about Jesus' fear, but there are certainly some very afraid people in the story. So we'll hear that a little bit later on when Pastor Jonathan shares the message with us. I um, also want to extend a welcome to those who are worshiping with us online. Good to have you here this morning with us as well. And a special welcome to any of you who ha maybe happen to be visiting in the sanctuary for the first or second time. If, uh, if that's true, I, I don't want to embarrass anybody. It won't make you stand or say anything. But if we have visitors and you're willing to raise your hand, I just want to say thanks. So in this half of the congregation, any guests this morning? And what? Well, Welcome to you. And in this half of the congregation, and yes, well, welcome to you. Good to have you here. Want our guests to know that later when we celebrate Holy Communion, that you are welcome to come join us in that meal. We believe that in this meal of bread and wine, we are receiving the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus. And that is a gift that God provides for us that we may be assured of God's love and forgiveness. And if that's what you desire, then by all means, come join us in the meal. As always, if you need to want to see the worship bulletin or any of the mission ops, you just go to plc.life. You can use your camera's uh, uh, QR code to bring that in for you if you would like. Uh, and, and use the Connect card. Uh, you can do that online, too, with the Connect button on the upper right corner. Let us know you're here and pass on any prayer requests. Okay, boy, I think that's everything you need to know, So, except to welcome one another to worship. So I invite us to just turn around, give everybody a warm wave. Let them know how glad you are to see them. And I invite the kids up for the children's message. Good morning, friends. Thanks for coming up. I always love the special time that we get. All right. Now, I have a couple questions to start off with, all right? Do you ever get afraid? Yeah? Okay. I was hoping it wasn't just me. 
right? And, but it can be sometimes uh, hard to, uh, to admit that sometimes we get scared. The next question, when we get scared, when we're afraid, what do we do? What do you do? Very forgetful, huh? So, some answers I heard earlier today. Some people, uh, when they're afraid, they scream into their pillow. That seems like an okay thing to do, right? Some hide. Some went and found a caring adults in their lives. Any of those sound like things you would do if you were afraid? Yeah. Some prayed. Some went and found like a blanket or a lovey that that would help them. All kinds of things, right, that we can do when we're afraid. Some of those like maybe running and hiding and screaming may be a good initial reaction, but actually don't help solve the problem, right? And then there are the times that we turn to, to those who love us and care for us. Well, I, I thought I'd bring something uh, that I used to use. I'm not going to admit to still needing it when I get afraid, but here is the blanket that my grandmother made for me when I was just a little kid. And you can tell exactly how much uh, I must have been afraid as a kid because it has, it's been well loved. Let's just say it has lots of holes in it, right? In fact, I think there's a part of here that I think if I wanted to, I could like crawl right inside there. Yeah, it's pretty well Pretty well loved. But uh, this blanket, so when I would get scared, I could wrap it around me, and, you know, it was nice and warm. But more than offering, like, warmth, if I were cold, it offered just a reminder of some of the people around me who loved me and cared for me and helped make things not so scary. And, um, and so I could wrap this arm around me and, and know that there were people who were always with me. In our Bible story today... Jesus is hanging out with some of his friends, and they get scared too. But they're on a boat, and they don't have their blankets with them. So instead, it's Jesus who offers them some words of comfort, telling them not to be afraid, and in his own way, telling them that he is right there with them and will always be there with them. And that's a good reminder for all of us that uh, we, when we get afraid, we may have the things we do like run and hide. We may have the blankets we wrap around ourselves, and the adults we go and find, but we also remember that Jesus is with us and always loves us and helps us in those moments when life can be a little scary. So, let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for all of the ways that you are with us, for the loving people that you put around us, and for those times when we're scared, that we can count on you to be there with us, knowing all the ways that you help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up, and you can go back to your seats. Jesus' teaching of God's Word began to grow, draw great crowds. And for Simon, James, and John, it felt both inspiring and risky. After Jesus' power was revealed, these three fishermen left everything behind to become apostles. From Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, 
put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. And when they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Word of God. Word of life. A few months ago when we set out uh, to plant this series, trying to reveal who Jesus is for us, we came up with the word of fearless for this day. But I'm not sure that I want to be fearless. And it's not that I go around living with all types of phobias. I mean, these things at least don't prevent me from doing what I love and need to do. I don't really care for heights, but when the time of the year comes to put up the Christmas lights or clean out the gutters, I get up on the ladder and the roof and do what needs to be done. I don't love public speaking. In fact, there are times when I would say I was pretty fearful of public speaking, and yet here I am. And that's not because some of you aren't scary. Some of you are really terrifying. But here I am. Even though I try to not let fear take control of me, I still don't want to be fearless. Because fear has a place. You know, when I lived in Scotland, I was on the volunteer fire department, and having a little fear of what could go wrong was certainly motivation to make sure that we practiced and took seriously all of the tasks that we may get called to do someday. So that in the moments when we were do, performing things that were scary and actually very fearful, we wouldn't be overcome by that sense of fear. And so maybe we need to start by making a distinction that there is a right dose of helpful, healthy fear, and then to recognize when that fear becomes overwhelming for us. I start with this today because our story that we get has some fear in it. The Bible writer calls it something else. They may be trying to go a little easy on these new-to-be disciples, and they say they are amazed. But amazement really doesn't capture the whole feeling that's on that boat. Amazement doesn't explain why it is that Simon Peter falls to his knees and then cries out and begs Jesus to leave. What does? Fear. Fear has overwhelmed him. Which is then why Jesus speaks to Simon Peter and the rest on the boat and tells them, do not be afraid. And that's the phrase that's used in the Bible over and over again at times when scary things are happening, when fear has overwhelmed. And on the boat that day, they have been overcome. And so Jesus speaks words of comfort to them. 
But the words that Jesus speaks about not being afraid has as much to do about what just happened and what they just witnessed as it does with about what Jesus is about to say to them. Do not be afraid, but from now on, you will be catching people. Now, I think if we're on the boat that day, enough fearful things have already taken place. Like, you didn't catch anything all night, but now we're tired and we're back on the waters and we throw out the nets and it's the largest catch we have ever experienced, more than we could ever imagine. The nets are tearing, the boats are sinking. This is starting to become a little bit of a frightening situation. And then to make matters worse... Jesus tells us that we're going to leave all of this behind, leave behind everything that we have known and prepared our whole lives to do and go do something else. There's something even worse about what Jesus has in mind that's coming than what we've just experienced. But Jesus says to not be afraid. And actually what Jesus says is maybe we can nuance it a little bit because what Jesus isn't saying is do not be afraid because there's nothing to be afraid of. Instead, he's saying don't be afraid but trust in what God is doing. And that's at the heart of all of these verses throughout the Bible that talk about not fearing Because all those moments come when there's really something to be afraid of, when God is speaking, when angels show up, when a future is uncertain. And it's not like the angel comes and says, hey, don't be afraid, I'm harmless. Nothing bad is coming. Instead, all those words are spoken to say, don't be afraid because what God is doing is bigger than your worries. Is bigger than the troubles you're encountering. So in 2015 in Detroit, I met Michaela for the first time. She had come as a youth participant in a small event that I helped to plan for youth with disabilities. And every kid who came to this event had a story and struggle of their own, the hopes and dreams for what they wanted in their lives, and oftentimes the questions of whether or not their hopes and dreams could even ever be accomplished. Michaela was a little different, and she was different in two ways. First, the disability that she lived with oftentimes wasn't noticeable until the late afternoons or evenings, when the long, tiring days got the best of her, and then she needed to use the wheelchair to help get around. And the second way she was different from the other kids who had gathered that week is she knew that she was dying. Not on that day or even that year. In fact, she just finished college and is now trying to figure out how to live into a passion of advocating and connecting young people who have chronic and terminal illnesses. But this hasn't changed the fact that she's dying. Medical advancements have slowed the pace. She's long last outlived the life expectancy that was once given to her. But every day she lives with the same reality. In fact, these words of, I'm dying is how she started a speech in front of 30,000 other high schoolers. And if I thought I was afraid to talk here, I'm not going to even imagine what that was like. But at the 2018 youth gathering, and I will say I have never seen a room with 30,000 teenagers in it be so quiet as when she began. And after naming her mortality as the real thing that she confronts on a daily basis, and naming the struggles and the constant medical procedures and the several hundred surgeries she had endured at that point in her life, and all the struggles that came with it, 
It was all enough to make sure that every person in that room had a little bit of sadness and pity for her until she spoke of the hope and faith that she carried. And part of what I think makes Michaela's story and her hope so powerful is that she knows that her faith and hope isn't going to change the fact that she's dying. It isn't going to take away the pain that she endures or the heartache that is at times present. But her hope and faith helps ensure that these things aren't the things in her life that define all of who she is. She is more than just the suffering, more than a diagnosis. And instead, Michaela has, since about the time she was 15, sought not to live into the fear of what was coming, but also not to live fearless, but to strive and trusting God more and trusting in the promise of God. And from the moment she decided to do that, to not get trapped and to despair, her life changed in so many ways. She began to form a network of others just like her who struggled with the same medical diagnosis, each thinking that they might be the only person in the world that they would ever encounter who had the same diagnosis, creating a place that they could journey together through the many struggles and joys a place to confront the reality of death that no young person should ever have to do, but they did. And together, they will learn to fear less and trust God more. She would start blogging and get picked up by the Huffington Post so her story could be amplified She then got to share her stories with thousands of others with a message of what fearing less and trusting God meant. Because Jesus doesn't say that there's nothing to fear. Jesus doesn't say that everything will be okay if we just say the right prayers or have the right faith that and life will be easy. Jesus says, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. At least that's what he says to the disciples on that day. But I think Jesus is saying something similar to each of us. At least the first part of that, don't be afraid. I think we can assume that Jesus speaks those same words to each of us. And then how that sentence finishes We have some work to do in listening to what God is saying to us. Do not be afraid. But God is calling us. Don't be afraid, but this is where God is leading us. Don't be afraid when you walk down this hard road. Jesus is present with us. Do you hear the words of Jesus saying this to you? Don't be afraid. And then what are the words that come next? Trusting that where God leads us, Jesus will be there. Not that those aren't scary or frightening times, but that we fear less trusting and what God is doing is bigger than that fear. what Michaela learned to do, to fear less and to trust God. It's what the disciples learned to do, and they had to learn this over and over again. I think Jesus was maybe constantly telling them, quit fearing and trusting. And over and over again, these same words are spoken to us. Do not be afraid, but trust. Amen. Nineteen ninety-eight. Celine Dion's "My Heart Will Go On" topped the charts. A cell phone looked like this, 
And Pastor Paul still sported a mustache. And the gathering area as we knew it was complete. At that time, Sioux Falls had 120,000 residents. Peace had 2,244 members, and the future was bright. Well, fast forward 24 years, Sioux Falls has over 200,000 residents, Peace has over 4,000 members, Paul shaved the mustache, and the future is still bright. But also crowded. Sioux Falls continues to grow in all directions, but we have run out of space to gather and to share life together. The ministry at Peace is as bright as ever. But with all the growth that Peace has experienced over the years, what once was a space to congregate has become a large hallway that feels too busy and too loud to be a place to stop and visit. The love and welcome of this congregation has never changed. And we need to make room to hear each other's stories and to catch up on life. A place to gather and form relationships isn't an extra or a luxury. It's a need at the heart of what it means to be a Christian community. We give thanks to all who have been welcomed in this place to make it so crowded. We give thanks for the ways that we dream to make sure we continue to be a welcoming place to all. And we give thanks to all who are prayerfully considering how they can be a part of Peace Next. February is the month we're going to be asking all of our, our households of part of the family of faith here to think about what they might be able to uh, respond with financially to, to make this uh, peace next happen and which will really turn a page in our ministry together. Um, so more of that as we get later on in the month. I uh, invite you to read those things that were sent to your homes. And for right now, uh, thank you for the ways that you continue to sustain all the ministries with your gifts here at Peace. Got the givey jar down there for the kids. Uh, offering plates are going to be passed. Online giving, just a couple clicks away. And, and as we spend this offering time, invite us to join in singing with the band.
Invite us now to stand as we are able and to confess our faith in this God who promises to walk with us in those fearful places as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And invite us now, as the Spirit of the Lord has been poured out upon us in abundance, let us be bold to pray for the church, for the world, and all that God has made. Lord God, equip your church to proclaim the good news that we have first received, the forgiveness and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ, and send us out as apostles, sharing the hope of your salvation with a waiting world. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Soften the hearts of rulers and governments that they perceive and tend to the needs of their people. Protect first responders and military personnel who risk their lives in service of others. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Lord God, your steadfast love endures forever. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, who are sick, who are in pain. We especially lift up those who've been in the hospital or having surgery or ill this week. Emily Gronevel, Diane Jefferson, Daryl Pearson. From our extended family, uh, Ruth Epp, and Judy Kirkman's cousin, Terry Gunderson, who's awaiting transplants. Our prayers also go with those who are battling long-term chronic illnesses that they might have their hope renewed by awareness of your presence with them and your hand upon them. We lift up Sally Muller and Adam Case, Lynette Christie and Jill Melchert, Sandy Beckman and Cheryl McGraw, Dewey Larson and Lowell Stelter, Sarah Hansen and Sharon Tunison, Emma Nye and Don Jacobs, Kelsey Hoffman and Keith Hill. And we pray for our sisters in hospice care, Judy Kiefer, Tilly Ugland, Yvonne Benoit, and Norma Phelps. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. The disciples received help from partners as they brought in that abundant catch of fish. So strengthen our congregation's partnership with community organizations and ministries Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints in our lives who boldly answered your call in this life and who now have answered your call as you have welcomed them home. We do pray for their loved ones that you, they, you might provide them comfort. Especially this week, we lift up the family of Don Swearingen, the family of Maxine Mannion, and the family of Linda Schumacher, the sister-in-law of Gary. Ask that you would keep them and all of us in your love until that day you gather us into your glory. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your goodness, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now I invite us to prepare our hearts to receive our Lord Jesus as he comes to us in this supper by hearing again his words of promise. 
that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite our communion service to come up. I think I might need one more basket holder and one more server. Let's see what happens here. I got both basket holders. I, okay, let's see. Yep. Thank you for volunteering, girls, but we're good. We do need uh, two more servers, though, if we could. Thanks. And one more. Thank you. Okay. Belinda, we're, we're, I mean, Aubrey, we're good. We'll, we'll, we'll have Melissa come up and help. Be my God. 
Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in your faith and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Some mission opportunities. When people wonder how they can make a difference, they tend to underestimate, one, the gifts that God has given them, and two, they underestimate the power of just showing up when there's something that needs to be done. For example, what could be easier than just showing up for the special congregational meeting to call a new pastor to peace? But if no one came to the meeting and we couldn't vote, then that pastor and the ministry that she is bringing couldn't happen. So you can be a part of equipping the ministry of peace just by showing up to that special meeting and taking action on the candidate that the call committee has recommended to serve as a pastor of peace. And never underestimate the power of just showing up to help serve at a Necessities for Neighbors distribution. No special skills are necessary except a willingness to be an ambassador of Christ's love. So show up Sunday afternoon and grab some necessities if you need them and volunteer to help. And as always, thank you for your financial donations. The Women's Ministry at Peace, also known as Welka, is inviting us to show up for their annual love offering next time you come to worship. These special offerings get used to make an impact on ministries at peace and local charities in our community. And we are sad to announce that the 2022 National Youth Gathering in Minneapolis has been canceled due to the ongoing pandemic and site restrictions that were impossible to overcome. However, we are happy to announce that our youth have been invited to go on a mission trip to North Carolina those same dates to work with The Dwelling, a ministry that walks along the homeless in the Winston-Salem area. There will be service learning experiences every day and a fun event every night. And anyone currently in the 8th through 12th grade can sign up to be a part of this new opportunity happening this summer. So sign up today. And do you want more information on the trip? Then join us this Monday, February 7th at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary or online for a youth mission trip meeting. Everyone registered or interested in coming on the trip is invited to join. Well, that was a big announcement for our, our uh, 8th to 12th grade youth. Uh, that's never happened before, but boy, it has a hugely wonderful opportunity on that mission trip and so I, I think that is going to be well participated in as well be lots of fun as well as a learning opportunity and of course uh, I don't have to I'm guessing some of you are here because you were planning on going to that special congregational meeting following this service looks like you're going to have a little bit of time before now and then so what a perfect time to grab some cookies and some coffee and just get to visit with each other till the meeting starts Let's stand and uh, send each other on our way as we pray together our prayer of good courage. 
Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace and be Christ's light in the world. Thanks be to God. Let's sing. I send